And a lot of people are you asking about, I don't know, I think a politician's, uh, <laughs> something happened today. Somebody announced. I, I what? saw that too. Whoa. Oh, I, thought she was a, I thought she was a top tier candidate. That's what I heard. Oh, she told us. Top to Mary, man, I was like, goodbye, Kamala. It's been nice. Hope you find your paradise. Wait, wait, wait. I don't hope she finds her paradise because oh. her paradise would involve throwing a lot of people in jail. So do oh. not find your paradise, no. Kamala Harris. Using do prison not find labor. It. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, man. 120,000 people of color behind bars. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Um, so she's supposed to, I don't think she's released a video yet. Aaron, can you monitor the internet and the minute Kamala releases an internet, uh, a video? Have your ear to the internet. Have your ear. <laughs> <laughs> and when she says something. Turn your transistor radio, Aaron, to the internet. I, um, I patently refuse. <laughs> she's, but anyway, she did release a statement. So let's read that. I'm not a billionaire. I can't fund my own campaign, she said. And as the campaign has gone on, it's become harder and harder to raise the money we need to compete. Well, that's true. She's not a billionaire. Now the Bloomberg's She's in. She's not a billionaire. There's Steyer and Bloomberg, two guys who have no business being there. Kamala actually has more business being there than those two jackasses. But doesn't that speak to the Democratic right? Party where it's like you can somehow make Kamala Harris look like for the working person? Yeah, she the cop, Kamala <laughs> like, Harris. How broken is our system? It was so great. So I got a text from a uh, a comedian friend of mine. I think he wants to remain anonymous, an an anonymous on this. But this is his joke. He goes, so now does uh, she have to give the money back to Steve Mnuchin? <laughs> <laughs> that donated to her various campaigns. So she's complaining she's not a billionaire. She can't fund her own campaign. Well, Bernie Sanders isn't a billionaire. How is he funding his? Hmm. Oh, that's right. He's got policies and platforms that resonate with masses of people. And they're all volunteering and, and giving. They're, and they're and all the average donation is about $18 this year, right? Oh, and he's actually gotten more individual donors and more donation dollars than he did at this point in the campaign four years ago. That's correct. Weird. And they're knocking on more doors in Nevada than like the previous years. Yeah. because They've they, already knocked on 100,000 doors. They know how insignificant it is. Mm -hmm. Right? And every time Bernie goes in the polls, it's like well, we always hear about Pete Buttigieg is in a strong fourth place. And now the Kamala drops out. The mainstream media is not going to say, oh, Bernie, this is his election to win now. They're going to go, she's going to make a fantastic VP. VP. They're already saying They're it. They're already saying They're it. They're already saying it. She's going to make a fantastic VP. Now, let me ask you this, because I felt this way and, and I still do. Do you think she was, and, and I could be wrong, do you think she was kind of the establishment's anointed one initially? Oh, yes. You do, too? Okay. See, I totally thought she was, and I'm like, okay, she didn't stick the first time. No, I predicted she was going to get another cycle, and either they tried and it really failed, or she just didn't get it. One of the two. Well, there's... The, I, 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 you agree. I thought, oh, they're going to keep trying to push her down. I thought they were going to push gonna her They're going to keep pushing, because they pushed her so hard in the spring. When she announced, there was like, oh, Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. She's amazing. Obama endorsed her. She's great. And then, you know... Every time she tried to play the identity politics, this is the beautiful thing about the internet. The internet can be an angry fire. Uh, it can be a crazy things. It can do a lot of crazy stuff. But when she's like, I smoked weed with Tupac and the internet went, no, you didn't. You graduated college before their albums even came out. Mm -hmm. You're lying. You know, yeah. like everyone kept calling her out on it. And they kept forcing it down her throat. We saw her meet with big donors and get the guidance of the Clinton. Her sister worked for the Clinton campaign. What the inside scuttlebutt is, is that her campaign staff and her sister and stuff were butting heads, right? Oh, really? And that's why it started to fall apart. But also, let's look at this. When you, we know, here's, I can show you why she was the anointed one. They told her she was the anointed one. And she was like, huh? How dare you? Congresswoman Gabbard, you took issue with Senator Harris confronting Vice President Biden at the last debate. You called it a, quote, false accusation that Joe Biden is a racist. What's your response? I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record 
as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president. But I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked... Oh, oh, oh. You know Kamala Harris is thinking, are there handcuffs somewhere and can I put them on Tulsi? Can I, can I taser her? Is there a way her? someone... Can I, can I taser her? Can I... <laughs> can, like, you, that... And the, res, the big cheering, Kamala was like, you know, that look down is like, wait a minute, I thought this audience was stacked in my favor. Well, they made sure they did the most recent time. Yes. They made sure they stacked it when Gabbard and Buttigieg went yes. at it. They made sure that was stacked for Buttigieg. Yeah. MSNBC made sure of it. CNN wasn't looking out quite as much, but MSNBC made sure of it. Well, they thought they had this locked up and they weren't, they were, no one was expecting, not CNN, not the DNC, no one was expecting Tulsi Gabbard to do this. Evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Looks like Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response? I think she's drawing yeah. the man. That's good. As the elected attorney general of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And this is the other thing. In the past, with less people paying attention, even as recently as 2016, you could make ridiculous claims like this. But when now there's people on Twitter in real time, more people are paying attention now. They're going, no, 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 no. You put 120,000 people of color behind bars right what did you reform how did you reform it and what i see is people of color on twitter going no i call bullshit kamala and they did it in real time and they've been doing it for months prior to this when she they did it. yeah i was gonna say they did it when she announced when she announced there were tons of people going at her and, and it was all kinds of people but a lot of people of color a lot of black people a lot of yeah. like everything people were just like no 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 we know what you really are yeah. And so when she's saying this, everyone in real time, I remember because I was, as I've done for every debate, as you've done, I was live tweeting and I just saw Twitter explode when she said this right here. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about reentering former offenders and getting them counseling. Thank it is you. why, and because I know that criminal justice Thank system you, is Senator. so broken, that I am an advocate for what Thank we you, need Senator. to do to your, not only decriminalize, but legalize marijuana. In the United States. I, want to, I want to bring uh, Congresswoman uh, Gabbard back in. Your response. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Bam. That and the, the 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 body language. I mean, this I got this from Tulsi's YouTube page, but you can watch the whole thing. It's about eight minutes long. That Kamala going, <laughs> that body language. She's just like, this was not supposed to happen. I didn't think we had this all planned out. Like, right. whoa, whoa, you're not supposed to call me on my actual bullshit. I'm supposed to just give platitudes and dumb Americans just snatch it up because of identity politics. Well, clearly the moderators didn't want it to happen because they asked Tulsi Gabbard a totally different question. And right. it was like a, a substantless baiting question. Yeah. And kudos to her for not taking the bait and instead, mm -hmm. no, 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 we're bringing it back here because this needs to be said. Yes. And, you know, like her and Bernie are the only people that ever do that in the debates. Yes. And they have to. They have to. And, and it shows how backwards and broken uh, our contemporary society is when we find ourselves rooting for a politician over a journalist in any circumstance. Yes. You should never be rooting for the politician. Even if it's a politician you like, you should be rooting for the journalist to talk to them on some of the things they're not as strong on or some of the things they need to be pushed yes. on. You should never be rooting for the politician. But yet, every debate. <laughs> if a That's a great question. If a journalist 
just asked Bernie, hey, Bernie, you're, you, you voted against the war in Iraq. Uh, you're against this invasion in Iran, but you voted for these handful of wars. Can you explain that? Can you Why? explain it? Can you explain that? Mm. I want to see that question asked of Bernie. Sure. Not the sandbagging nonsense they give him, but they're not going to ask him that because CNN and MSNBC, as is Fox and ABC, they get money from the war machine. So they can't they can't take any the slightest anti-war stance. Right. And the other thing, again, they ask Kamala softball questions. They, they sandbag Tulsi and good for Tulsi for calling her out on this, because here's one thing I have yet to see this video on any sort of rotation anywhere. I haven't seen this question asked. And but the thing that's beautiful about this election, more people are paying attention. Yeah. So while the corporate media won't show this upcoming video that I'm going to show, we're aware of it because we work in independent media. OK, so I say with all love and warmth. <laughs> That part of the concern also for people who, um, who are progressive thinking and liberal minded or just progressive thinking in terms of just fix it, fix it, is that we all have these posters in our closet that... Don't say we, you don't have one of these posters, Kamala. You don't have this poster in your, in your closet, okay? You got handcuffs and orange jumpsuits to give to your labor. It's attached to a stick that we sometimes will card out when we're talking about criminal justice policy and those statistics that you first heard when we opened it up, incarceration, and we run around with these signs, build more schools, less jails. Build more schools, less jails. And we walk around everywhere, build more school, we protest, build more schools, less jails. Put money into education, not prisons. There's a fundamental problem with that approach, in my opinion. Nope, there's not. No, there isn't. There isn't a fundamental no, there's, approach. There's, there's, not. There's, there, there's, a, there's a fundamental approach. There's a fundamental problem with you. There's yeah. a fundamental problem that we live in a country where there are for-profit prisons. That is the fundamental problem. That's the fundamental process. problem. That's the fundamental problem. That's not legal in other places. Yes. But Ugh. no, no, it gets more offensive. And it's this. I agree with that conceptually. But you have not addressed the reason I have three padlocks on my front door. No, they just affect They just addressed it. The fact that if we had more schools, you wouldn't need three padlocks on your front door. Yeah. If we had a, a criminal justice system that actually reformed people rather than had criminal colleges, if we had education, if we had health care, if we had free college tuition, how many... People would need to be criminals. How many deadbolts would you need? But she would never want to make that connection. I mean, you can just see her moving the goalposts in real yep. time if you look close enough. Yeah, that's what she's doing. That's it. Is she done? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, she <laughs> is done. And she is done. She's so done. I'm so glad that this neoliberal corporate uh, pro-private prison, pro-banking, pro-corporate establishment, pro-war machine candidate is gone. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. Now we just got some more. We just got you know, to get it, rid of some more. People were asking the question, and I think it's a fair question to ask, like, why was Kamala Harris first when there are so many other unqualified people, too? Right. And so many other corrupt people, too, which is a fair question to ask. Yes. And I think it's just because her corruption was just so on the surface. That she was just the easiest to unmask. Yeah, and the thing is, is because she was so outspoken, and this is the thing that has bitten the Democrats in the ass back, going back to the 90s, the tough on crime. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't sit there and go, oh my God, what Trump is doing at the border is so awful when you've done similar crap. You can't sit there and right. say, it's, he's building, he's putting families in cages, which is awful. What is happening at the border is horrifying. But it, these cages, who built them? They were built under the Obama administration. It was the Biden crime bill that was ratified by President Clinton, which has put hundreds of thousands of people, of, mainly of color, behind mm -hmm. bars. Oh, he had his role in the Patriot Act, too. Yeah. I think for him, I, I think the only reason, because Biden definitely has as much on the surface. Well, actually, I, I take that back. He has more on the right. surface than Kamala Harris. What he has that she doesn't have is that Obama bromance. Yes. Like they're able to draw that, too. They're all, well, he was Obama's guy. Right. Um, once he can't coast on that anymore, I think he's next. And I think Buttigieg's starting to get unmasked, too. I hope, yeah. Buttigieg's starting to get unmasked. It's, the Onion put unmasked. that article out about Pete Buttigieg just found out that there's actual black voters. <laughs> 
<laughs> the onion. Oh my god, the onion is so. They've perfect. been nailing it a lot recently. They're like the most trusted name in news. Yeah, I mean for real. Pretty much. Um, the Kamala thing, though, this is so amazing. This is what's starting to give me hope. The last two months. I've really started because because yes, the DNC is trying to cheat. Ex- exactly. They they they. But this is when you know you can beat an opponent. When they are using the exact same way they beat you last time, and you've made adjustments, and they haven't. Mm-hmm. This is when you know you can beat them. And it's also evident that, like you said, and like we've both said, more people are paying attention because I mean, Tulsi Gabbard dunking on her repeatedly definitely played a huge role in sinking her campaign was it the only thing it wasn't the only thing no. but it, it played a huge role well there's like this combination of things that have that are slowly giving me hope more so than ever the dnc is doing exactly what we thought they would do oh yeah they're still going to try to push bernie to a second ballot so the super delegates can cheat him of course but this is wow this is this is like wow this isn't like j.i insley dropping out or or one of the other like you know, Andrew Yang or somebody. This was the chosen one. I mean, she was the chosen one. Yeah. I'm convinced of that. And and she just did not stick at all because of her own corruption that people weren't just turning a blind eye to. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, she actually had, I mean, strictly speaking from an objective observational standpoint, she had a couple good appearances in the debates mm-hmm. early on. Yeah. Uh, then, you know, Tulsi handed her a lunch. Well, when she called she never out. recovered. When she, Yes, good point. When she called out Joe Biden, it was like, okay. She got some golden sound bites. She and gets, people were like, you know, mm. and, and kind of like when you just look at it on the surface, if you're not paying a lot of attention, you don't know much about her. She looks like the, the she looks like today, right? I mean, she looks like this is the future. This person is forward thinking. She's calling out Joe Biden who's stuck in the past. You know, on the surface, that's what it looks like. But we don't you, need you, and the identity politics, I'm sorry to interrupt, but like we don't need another old white guy. See? The exactly. identity politics of this, but then you unmask then her. Then you unmask it, and it's like, well, she's incredibly corrupt, too. She's incredibly corrupt. You know, but for someone who just started paying attention, she looked damn good. She looks great. If and I wasn't paying that much of attention, I would think, yeah, she's. this is what we need. Mm-hmm. And then you find out who she is and what her record is. Steve Mnuchin donated her 2010 AG campaign. She doesn't prosecute Mnuchin. Then he donates again to her senatorial campaign. I'm sure he's donated to her presidential campaign. And well, it's like she giggles about throwing truant uh, uh, kids of uh, or the parents of truant yeah. kids in jail. I mean, yeah. I mean, she's just this speech is offensive. Very Every much time so. I watch it, it she's offends. just mocking protesters in general. Yeah. She's like, oh, you don't like the status quo. So you get a thing with the stick and get it's like, oh, God. She's so condescending. She got your little sign. Ugh. And, <laughs> and, and after Tulsi crushed her. She did. She went, well, I'm a top tier candidate. Mm, not so top tier now, are you? Mm-mm. And also, so we've seen that happen. So then, so then um, Hillary, which this was a gift, uh, calls Tulsi a Russian asset. Tulsi crush calls her the queen of warmongers. And not only that, Clinton, uh, by calling Tulsi a Russian asset, gives Tulsi a week's worth of free airtime. Oh, big time. Which yeah. Just boosted to, like, her numbers. Tell her story. And you know, my mom always said, you know, you attract uh, you attract people more with honey than with, uh, you know, vinegar. Like, like vinegar. And then that's very true. I mean, I think it had to have taken Hillary Clinton at least three weeks before she realized Queen of Warmongers wasn't a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> so for the longest time, she probably thought, oh, Tulsi, that's, she's killing me with kindness. I feel bad now. And then slowly she realized, oh, wait. Oh. People don't like that. Oh, I thought that was, it was I was about to put it as a 2020 slogan. Ew. Can't do that now. Now I, I like that Russian asset even less. I'm with Queen of Warmongers. <laughs> Um, that happens. Then three of the four members of the gang endorse Bernie. Mm-hmm. The uh, squad. Tulsi, the squad. Yeah, the squad. Well, uh, and then Ari- Ariana Presley. I mean, aren't you wondering, man, is she having some second thoughts when she had to? Uh, Elizabeth Warren. I'm sorry. We're both comics. If you can't handle a heckler, you, you can't lead a country. No. I'm sorry. If you can't handle a heckler, you cannot lead a country. You cannot solve climate change or have any part in it. You, I'm sorry. She could. How are you going to be the leader of the She just stood there. What are you going to do? She just stood there. And then Ariana Presley had to bail her out. Bail her out. How are you? And, and Steph Zamorano brought this up when we talked about it on the Jimmy Dore show. Is Liz Warren going to bring Presley to the debates versus Trump? Right? 
Because what, what do you think Trump's going to do? As soon as he says something mean, she's going to oh. run up there and, and bail her out. Liz Warren's just going to freeze when Trump says something mean? Ariana Presley, you wouldn't have to do that for Bernie. No. You would never have to do that for Bernie in a million years. No, he, he doesn't need bailing out. So it's, 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 it's good. You know, I thought more of the smaller, smaller candidates would start dropping out. But this is like... This is huge. The thing you got to wonder... Be careful of some Clinton orchestration. Warren drops out next. Biden drops out. And then Hillary goes, someone's got to lead us. <laughs> Be careful, man. That's the kind of insanity that, that she and her husband have. I mean, Be yeah. I, I mean, you, you can't rule it out as an impossibility until it's, it's literally an impossibility. But I'm slowly, because more and more people are paying attention. I had this conversation with Tim Black like about six or seven months ago. And he said this, and he started, he kind of planted this seed in my head. He goes, Graham, more people are paying attention than they were four years ago. And we're seeing it. More people are paying attention. Her getting unmasked, Pete getting unmasked, uh, Robert Francis O'Rourke getting unmasked. Uh, we're starting to see more of it. And then when this goes viral. Here I saw that made me aware when I was in law school, proudly for Holloway, proudly for your dad, first African-American state senator in the state of, in the state of Delaware. Everything about. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of I got hairy legs that turn that 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 that, that, that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down. So it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. And I tell you what, the men, they're now all men, the guys I work with down here, and they're all guys at the time. They're all good men. Most of them made an awful lot of themselves. And Earl Larkin had a rough time. And some of you knew Earl. I, def I came back as a public defender. What you just said is one Madison. of the most Somebody insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. <laughs> anyway, just had to show Biden, because he's getting unraveled in real time. Like literally and figuratively. Literally, I mean, like I, I think next time you do a political vigilante game show, you need to have a new segment: uh, Joe Biden speech or shitty beat poetry, <laughs> and see if people can differentiate it. Now, by the way, some people were like, I tweeted that, and people were like, "Come on, Ron, the beat." And I'm actually a fan of the beat generation. I did say shitty beat poetry, right? Not right. The good stuff, the shitty stuff. Like, and Earl had a hard time, Daddy O. And there would be hair on my legs. And sometimes the sunscreen would drip, drip, drip. <laughs> and you know, it was cool swaying, and the kids would jump on my lap. And it was all guys, and that was okay, Daddy O. Guy or girl, man, we would party. Yeah. Frankie, baby. Like Joe Biden's speech or shitty beat poetry? What was it? That was a little bit of both. What actually. was it? What was it? That was. <laughs> Oh, but uh, yeah, he's uh, wow. It, it's it's there's another thing who's I want. Who's inspired by that? Uh, who is inspired by that? Like, like it's who's just... inspired by him by him saying malarkey? Who's inspired by the term malarkey? He no no malarkey is a gateway drug to shitty politics. Did you know that? That's... <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a speech. I mean, he, he he says some of the craziest things, man. He said, what did he say in, um, God, what did he say in, in 2008 about, um, God, about black men? Uh, oh, the thing about condoms and stuff? Yeah. Is that what you're referring to? Oh, yeah. I I don't remember the exact quote, but yeah, I, I think I saw that a while back. Even back then, he had a bunch of just ridiculous gaffes, but he was just so kind of under the radar and such you know like obama picked him and and then it was like oh he's he's friendly joe or whatever yeah it's crazy because it's like he 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 has the no malarkey bus he 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 says he said it, it's unbelievable it, it the, the fact that the stuff he says about black people if if oh 
if Biden wouldn't have picked him or if Obama wouldn't have picked Biden, he would how would that's the only reason he's allowed to get away with any of this and the right. slaves all the Joe all the Joe Biden sniffing people's hair stuff and then he makes that puts his arm around that girl I love kids jumping in my lap. He's I, he's out of his mind. Well, like, my buddy, my buddy Lenny Shelton has a really, really good joke. He's just like, dude, I believe Joe Biden is at least somewhat racist because his entire campaign is I have a black friend. Right. That's what, that's what my buddy Lenny says. And it's so true and so funny. Um, but yeah, he, I mean, his campaign knows this. Right. That's why, I mean, they are intentionally, and this has all been documented. They're intentionally booking him as little as possible you, you right. don't see him out often right usually when you see him it, it's when he's having campaign events and somebody posts it online and it goes viral because of how ridiculous he is or he's confronted by someone in the sunrise movement and his answer is so shitty that it goes viral oh, yeah you know i mean he is proving there is such a thing as bad publicity because that's literally all he's getting and then when someone in the latino community asks him about immigration he has nothing so he says vote for trump Pretty much says, hey, I'm done. And when someone asks him about health care, again, he has nothing. So he says, I guess you should just vote for Bernie, which, Joe, that's good advice, Thanks, by Joe. the way. Great, that's great advice, good Joe. Good props, buddy. Um, 262 people watching. Hit the like button, everybody. Let's answer some super chats. Uh, visit Ron Flacone and I on the road. December 13th, we're in Ventura. December 14th, yeah. we're in Hollywood. And a bunch of dates in 2020. Go to GrahamElwood.com or RonFlacone.com. For tour dates, shave your knuckles for justice. Joe Biden is like if jet lag was a person. That's like, <laughs> like I'm the, thinking about it. Like he is he's jet the, lag personified. He's he's Joe Biden jet lag 2020. Totally. He's the jet, jet lag, lag Joe. Jet I, I got it. All right, we got to Let's get that trending. Let's get that trending. Start that trending right now. I'm tweeting it right now. Everybody, right now. You guys, tweet it too. Jet lag Joe. Jet lag Joe. Joe Biden is is like is the jet lag of candidates. Joe Biden. Jet hashtag jet lag Joe it's 2020. Like if jet lag, <laughs> it's jet lag one word or two. I think it's two. Two make it one. Was a per person. Twitter make it one. Yeah, yeah. Let's make it one. Because you know when you're so tired, you just don't know what you're saying, and you're just like, that day I got back from Australia, I did my I took a nap, but then I tried, I did my live chat, and some of the questions I was just like, all right. And you I'm were like, like, when I go surfing. My leg <laughs> hair, it, sometimes it turns blonde, yeah, and I, I, I like it when the surfboard's in my lap. <laughs> and they were like, Graham, we asked about the Green New Deal. What are you doing? Go to bed. Build your own bill, child. And then I, <laughs> I shut the stream down. I guess you should vote for Trump yeah, signing but, off but, now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is malarkey. <laughs> okay. I may have said that. Go back and watch it. I don't know what I said. Um... All right, so this is from Randy Ria. Randy, thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, please tell me you both saw the clip of Joe Biden talking about having hairy legs, how he would get swimming pools, kids rub his hairy legs till they turn blonde, and how he, of course. That must be old. We read your mind. We read your mind, Randy. I knew someone was going to ask me this. The hair would be blonde, and now I get roaches. Did he mean roaches like pot, or did he mean like literal roaches? Roaches. Like the, so, so they crawled around, too, yeah. while he was lifeguarding? Yeah. What a freaking weirdo. It was like, like a William this? S. Burrell short story. That's Don't. what that was. That's, 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 that's what that was. <laughs> if you read Nate at lunch or listen to a Joe Biden speech, you learn the same it's amount of information. Same, they make the same You'll be amount of way sense. more entertained by Naked Lunch. Yeah, if you want to know Joe Biden's policy, just read Naked Lunch. Read Naked Lunch. And that'll that'll make sense. Yeah, and it, it's also it's also time stamped in the same way. Yeah. It's also So Joe Biden that's is, the era Joe Biden is living in. Right. Where he's going to push for over tax breaks for mugwump jizz. <laughs> That's a Naked Lunch reference. <laughs> Boom. Who's the actor who played him in the movie? Peter. Peter Weller. Peter Weller. Thank you so much. Who could probably play Joe Biden pretty well. Peter Weller would be the, yeah, he's my choice for the Joe Biden story. We got to write this. <laughs> the uh, Jet Lag Joe. That's the name Jet of the Jet Lag movie. Joe. <laughs> How. Malarkey movie. The no malarkey <laughs> bus makes John McCain look middle-aged. Like. He oh. had the Straight Talk Express. Yeah, this this makes John McCain look like a young no hipster. No malarkey. Holy. Yeah, God. that by comparison, that's like John McCain is like on a scooter <laughs> with a vape pen and a man bun. That's the equivalent. <laughs> the campaign was just oh, we'll like, get off my lawn is, isn't original enough. We got to go. Let's do no malarkey and <sighs> let's not let them talk often. 
Someone's asking him a question. Somebody get, get over there. <laughs> Wave your hands or something. I think what this campaign should do, and if anyone from his campaign is watching, release a press statement saying Joe Biden is stepping out. He's done. He's stepping down. And then just have Biden give camp. Don't tell Joe that he's out. Just and just have him walk. Just bring him into to rooms with people. And hey, Joe, this is a big fundraiser. He won't know the difference. Yeah, just give him a microphone. And yeah, see just what give he him a microphone and you know build. Like Even a, if like everyone prior to him was doing karaoke, he'll still just he won't know. He'll just talk yeah, about stuff and just build a fake campaign trail village like the prisoner show. And just have him live in it and give him campaign speeches and debates and just give him poll numbers and tell him he's in the mix. And and have him endorse somebody who's not Bernie Sanders. Uh, Bernie doesn't need that baggage. No, no, don't. Have him endorse Pete Buttigieg. In fact, you know what? Gavin Newsom. Yeah. I don't say this often, but thank you. I actually wrote a very kind letter to Iowa, and I said, hey, Iowa, I know Gavin Newsom's going to endorse Kamala Harris. <laughs> Not trying to be a dick, but do you mind keeping both of them? Iowa said, no, I don't blame you, Iowa. I know that was a lot to ask. But uh, yeah, Gavin, thank you, buddy. I don't say that often. I, I said it for net neutrality. Thank you for that. And there's a couple other things where I was like, okay, you did the right thing there. But endorsing Kamala, way to go. He didn't even get all the way to Iowa. It's a, If he was driving to <laughs> Iowa, he wouldn't have got there in time. I hope he flew. He wouldn't have gotten there in time. Boy, the Gavin Newsom endorsement is so powerful. Right? He endorses, the next day she drops out. <laughs> So, Gavin, endorse Biden, then endorse yes. Warren. Then endorse Buttigieg. Just, just endorse them all, Gavin. Yeah. Gavin, and, and then, man, thank you. Thank Good you job, so buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. This is the Gavin Newsom boy. <laughs> He's got the Midas touch. It's the Newsom nuke. That's what it is to a campaign. <laughs> oh, man, we got to. Yeah, all right. That's got a trend, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I was gonna cut this video earlier, but this whole this is staying in the clip. Gavin uh, Newsom endorses Kamala uh, campaign. She drops, she drops out, out the next day. If he was driving, he wouldn't have even gotten to Iowa in time. He, this is a like slightly older reference, but he's like the Ted McGinley of uh, endorsements. Ted McGinley, for those of you younger viewers, he would join long-running TV series, and then the show would get canceled. Like, he joined Happy Days at its <laughs> end, got canceled, like, <laughs> Love Boat, whatever, Laverne and Shirley. Anytime Ted McGinley joined a show, it got canceled. He joined And he's a show. tall, good-looking guy. Just Henry like Winkler a, got all the lines, and then the show just got canceled. Yeah. The term Jump the Shark? Yeah. That was the, that was the Ted McGinley seat. That was the last season of... Happy Days where Ted McGinley joined the show. That was the last season when that happened? I believe so. Or really? second to last. Yeah, right in there. Because like eventually it just became the Fonzie show. I remember right. that. Like it just became like like Ralphie was, or not, who was the main guy? Richie. 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 He left. Richie pretty much left. He was gone. He was doing other stuff. Started Ralph making was, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ralph and the other, what, Potsy? Was Potsy, that the other dude? Yeah. yeah. So the three of them were gone. The sister was gone. And it was just the Fonzie show. And it was like, all right. Joni Loves Chachi was the spinoff. And then they brought in Ted McGinley. <laughs> He's a tall, good-looking guy, and he's the Gavin Newsom of uh, of TV. Well, Gavin Newsom is the Ted McGinley of politics. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. I like that better. <laughs> Gavin Newsom. Oh, he's got such pearly white fake teeth. So, um, if Newsom says yes, you get a new gig. Yeah, yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> Like and subscribe and share these videos out there and make sure you hit the subscribe button. They're unsubscribing people and hit the bell notification. Let's go to some more super chats. 276 people watching. Balthazar228. Thank you, Balthazar. Unfortunately, most of hashtag KHive will go to um, Peter Mames, Bourgeoisie's Cult of Senior Citizens Aerobics Instructors. Finger S. King Bad, Joe Warren T. is void or Corey's not in the White House. Yeah. I, who's next? Like, who's to, who do you think drops out next? Should we have a pool? Oh, yeah, we should totally have a pool. Yeah, let's make it like a March Madness type thing. <laughs> I think it might be Joe. 
Well, I mean, if we're being literal, it's, it's going to be someone like Delaney, or it's going to be like a no name. It's going to be uh, one of them. Okay. I, aside from the, the uh, yeah, obviously. The, the obvious The ones. obvious no namey people that are just like, of the like six main people less, eight, seven, eight people left. Mm-hmm. Who was on the stage for the, there's 10 people on the stage for the last one? Yeah, yeah. And there's like six who have made it so far. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Stayer's just. Or Steyer or whatever. He's just doing a like a stunt. Of course. Like it's just a so Bloomberg. stunt. So is Bloomberg. Well, Bloomberg's just trying to get, uh, you know, his ties to Trump and Epstein uh, not discussed. Mm-hmm. So he's just uh, running this ridiculous presidential thing. And they're both probably a little bored. I mean, you yeah. know, all that money. What, what are you going to do, do with it? What are you going to do? just going to. Epstein's Island is shut down. So what, there's not much more for you to do. So I would say Yang might be next, but his supporters really just came to his aid big time. So I, I think he's going to try. So he's just getting more while. grassroots donations. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's got his following, and then they're showing up for him. So I think he, you know, he's got to stick it out as long as he can for them, and and I think he would or he will. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe I, it's going to be one of the billionaires next. I think. Because mm-hmm. they're they're just gonna realize how stupid this is, or they're they're just gonna move on to other things, or they're just gonna you know, I think it'll be uh, I I think it'll be Bloomberg next. He that's just my, got in. That's my guess. I know. Good. I know, but I think he's gonna be next. Because because I I mean Budigig still has a ton a ton of donor support behind him. Well, yeah, he's got and some of it's coming Facebook, from Hollywood, he's Silicon got Valley. Facebook, he's yeah. got Silicon Valley, he's got uh, you know, probably deeper ties we don't even know about. Yeah, CIA. And and he does have some people who honestly were fooled by him. Mm-hmm. There there are some people who are fooled by this guy. Um I think so, the fooled by him's are starting to thin out because I like hope so. what's happening on social media him being called out that article that we did last week about Pete Buttigieg is a lion and MF Mm -hmm. Um, that call him out. The onion thing that has been thousands and thousands of retweets and likes on this onion article. Um, And so I think Buttigieg is, uh, he might be our next dropout. Really? See, I have a feeling it's going to come down to, I I think the final four, it's going to be Biden, Warren, Buttigieg, Bernie. That's what I think the final four is going to be. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I know Tulsi has said she's in it till the convention, but I think Bernie's going to name, I think he should name her as his VP once the elections start going. Everyone, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. All right.